Hey, it's Dustin Yark, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating your first GPT. If you don't know what a GPT is, it's basically a custom version of ChatGPT that you can create for a specific purpose. It was just released at the OpenAI Dev Day last week, so let's take a look. Okay, so this is the GPT screen when you click Explore on the left-hand menu. Uh, so you can see here, I've recently used a coloring book GPT that was actually made by OpenAI. I'm going to have a whole video on that coming up shortly, so stay tuned. There's some other ones that are made by OpenAI that you can try here. This Negotiator one sounds really good, actually. You can like use it to advocate for yourself, kind of like bartering, or if you're asking for a raise or something, that one would be really good. But what I want to do today is create a custom GPT of my own. And I'm gonna have to resize this window. Bear with me for a second. Thanks for watching this far, it really means a lot. If you're finding value in my content, consider joining our community of AI and writing enthusiasts by subscribing. It's a simple click for you, but it makes a big difference and helps keep you updated with our latest insights and tutorials, which I share multiple times a week. Don't forget to give a thumbs up too if you're enjoying the video. I've got this screen that says, Hi, I'll help you build a new GPT. You can say something like, Make a creative who helps generate visuals for new products or make a software engineer who helps format my code. What would you like to make? So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to make a assistant to help with world building for our novels. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and do that. There's also this configure option up here. If you want something that's uh, a bit more specific, you can go there and actually like enter fields like name, description, instructions. But we're just going to go through the basic way here of like dealing with Chad GPT here. So I'm going to say, hey, buddy, I need some. Uh, you are going to be a tool. I'm going to say, hey, buddy, with an exclamation mark. I'm being really nice to Chad GPT today. You're going to be a tool. It's used for novelists to engage in world building create rich and vibrant fictional worlds for their stories to take place in. <coughs> um, so I've got a list of world building questions that I gathered from various website. I think most of them came from Reddit, actually. <laughs> there was like a big mega thread on Reddit with like all these world building questions, so I'm going to throw theirs and that in there. Actually, I'm just going to go with this for now, because I know that I've seen somebody else do this and it wants to make a uh, icon for you next, so we'll just say go with this. For this world building assistant, how about the name World Weaver? Does that sound good to you? Yeah, that sounds great. Here's a profile picture for World Weaver. It's designed to have a Vinton nostalgia style showcasing an old map and mythical creatures, fantastic landscapes is accompanied by a compass and ancient scripts. Actually, yeah, yes, that's exactly what I had in mind. I didn't expect like the sepia aged paper tone around the edges, but I was thinking I wanted mountains in it and I wanted like a contrast between like green and stuff. Great, now let's refine the context of World Weaver to make sure it aligns perfectly with your needs. To start, let's focus on the role and goal you mentioned which help not listen to world building. Can you specify the types of worlds or genres that you'd like it to specialize in, or should it be versatile across all genres? Um, <clears throat> I imagine that this tool will primarily be used for creating high fantasy, but I'd also like it to be versatile enough to used in any genre, including science fiction or dystopia and others. That means I'd like it to be able to create worlds on other planets or even in space. Uh, 
Next, let's discuss what should be emphasized or avoided in World Weaver's responses. Is there any specific elements or details you want to focus on or steer clear of when assisting in world building? <clears throat> I have a series of questions that I'd like you to prompt the author to provide answers for whenever they use your services. Okay, I'm going to put a huge list of questions in here. <clears throat> the world building process could be a back constant back and forth between you and the author, gathering new information and refining as you go. When the author has provided their information, you'll rise the full details of their world into a report, including generating images as well. Here are questions that I want you to ask every time you build a new world. Okay, so like I said, I had like a whole bunch of questions about world building that I found on Reddit. So I threw them all in here. I just said, I have a series of questions that I'd like you to prompt the author with to get them to provide answers whenever they use your services. The world building process should be a constant back and forth between you and the author, gathering new information and refining as you go. When the author has provided all of their information, you'll summarize the full details the world into a report, including generating images as well. So I threw, here is the information about the world that I want you to gather every time you build a new world. The author is unsure they can decline to answer. So I've got like, what's the origin of the world? What are the scientific laws of the world? What are the culture's core values? What do family roles look like? And then I just kind of started listing words like diet, dining customs, food, Language, gestures, people, monsters, jobs, hazards, if there's anything like hazards in the world, agriculture, industries, political structure, political power, magic, subcultures, minorities, foreign cultures, yada, 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 yada. So if we're just going to go with this and see what it says next. I don't know. This is just an experiment. I don't know if this is going to work or not. We'll see what it comes up with. Pew! So it's not formatted very well. I have like bulleted lists with numbers that start back at one multiple times in there. We'll see if it can make some magic happen and do something with that. Now it's personal wise world weavers responses. How do you envision this interaction style? Formal, casual, enthusiastic or something else. How should it address the authors? Uh, should address the authors respectfully as if it's one of their peers should be concise should be friendly but concise World Weaver is all set up and ready for you to try out. Please head over to the playground to see how it works. If there's any refinements, changes you'd like to make, just let me know. Okay, so we're gonna save that, publish to only me for now. Okay, so now you can see in the top corner here, we are working with World Weaver. Actually, it's in the middle here too. World Building Assistance for Novelists, offering a detailed and Create a world concept. Let's say like, hey, I want to create a new world for my novel. Can you help me? <clears throat> Let's start by laying out the foundation of your world, genre and tone, 
world origin and history, geography and climate, magic or technology systems, habitats and species. Okay, so I'm not going to give it like super detailed answers. I'm going to try to answer at least one thing for each of these bullet points, but we'll go with this. We'll say like uh, the genre is high fantasy. This world was created when a dragon burped. It's only a couple hundred years old, so not much history. I want it to be a whimsical fantasy parody of more serious fantasy novels and tropes. Uh, the climate is temperate, and I don't know what I want the world to look like. Can you pick something for me? Uh, there's magic in this world. It comes from rare glowing blue rocks that are found in the earth. Times. It's kind of a gray market thing that's looked down upon and kind of pressed by the government. People in this world look like humans. They have a different name for their... You can make the name up for me. <laughs> um, there are plenty of different species of wild animals on this planet, which each look similar, something recognizable on Earth, but with a unique twist. Um, <clears throat> each town on this world has its own mayor, and there isn't really national level governments. Religion of this world focuses on the great dragon. but most people are kind of secular. <laughs> um, economy. The economy, technology, and trade on this world is somewhere between renaissance and modern. People live a basic, simple lifestyle of farming, blacksmithing, etc., but with some more modern technologies and quality of life improvements like plumbing, running water, and electricity. Uh, conflict. Conflict comes from a race of monsters that lives inside the earth and come out at night. <laughs> Boom, let's see what it does. This is a wonderful start to your high fantasy story, rich with whimsy and playful takes on classic fantasy tropes. I kind of spit out like a basic report about geography. It says like, what about floating islands? Uh, inhabitants are called Eloria. Magic system. Just gave me the name of Luma Stones for the Blue Rocks, which is fine. Each town has its own mayor. Some towns are strict about Luma Stone usage, while others are more lenient. Great dragon thing. Uh, they call the race of monsters Nocturne. So now it has additional aspects. Uh, you make up the list of festivals. Let's have five major ones per year. People in this world 
we'll assume speak English and it's never brought up. Nocturne, Nocturne have a creepy sounding demonic language. Um, people like painting, music, and typical artistic things. Loomis don't used in everything from vehicles to tattoo guns. No special bonds between animals. Oh, we'll see if it's gonna finish it up or if it's gonna keep asking me more and more questions. Oh, the great birthday, yes! Celebrated in spring, spring, this festival commemorates the creation of the world by the dragon's burp. People feast with fizzy drinks. <clears throat> Luma Fest in the summer for the discovery and use of Luma Stones. <clears throat> so it gave me some more holidays. I'll say, yeah, that all sounds great. Is there any other questions you need to ask me? Can you generate a report? And maybe some pictures of what an average town in this world would look like. Okay, let's clarify a few more details. <clears throat> Towns look quaint, old-timey with thatched roofs, large wooden beams. People travel with bicycles. Cars powered by Luma stones. People communicate over large distances by opening up portals with Luma stones, opening up tabletop work like a video chat. An average day depends on the person. Let's go to school, adults, work, adventures, go adventuring. <laughs> you need a permit or license to use the stones that don't come sealed into commercially produced products. I don't want to define any note specific plants or animals at this time. World Summary Report. This is the report that it spit out. It pretty much gave me back exactly what I told it. It didn't like change it very much. So it's like high fantasy. World is created by a burp from the Great Dragon, relatively young, only a couple hundred years old. Temperate climate with unique floating islands connected by land bridges. Multicolored leaves, hills with crystal like grass and vibrant rivers. Luma stones. Uh, it said the people, just because I mentioned tattoo guns, it says they have vibrant eye colors and intricate tattoos. Okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Basically, all the stuff that I put in. So here's the house that it spit out. That looks pretty cool. It's extremely focused on bicycles, is what, like eight people, seven or eight people on bicycles on like one tiny piece of road there. Okay, we got the big Luma Stones powering stuff, little Luma Stones for like lamps, and all the houses have like glowy Luma Stone stuff in the windows. You can see that it's like a bit of an island. Here's an image depicting the average town in your rooms of Cloud Fantasy Worlds. Okay, uh, I'll say, can you give me an illustration of an Alorian? How the hell did it spell that? Alorian. Man, woman, and child, please. <laughs> Curious to see their bright eyes and intricate tattoos. Let's see what it does. Here's an illustration of some Elorians. They got the bright eyes. This one's got different colored eyes, intricate tattoos. Man, they really love their tattoos. 
If you mention tattoo guns, when you're world building with this thing, it's going to tattoo the heck out of these people. Just FYI, even their 12 year old children. <laughs> I like the elf ears and the piercings and stuff. That's pretty cool. Showcasing unique characteristics of the world. I like kind of like the leathery outfits too. That's cool. Uh, lastly, can you generate an image of what a nocturne looks like for me, please? From the name, I'm guessing it's going to be like a weird pitch black golem kind of like crawly, slithery kind of humanoid thing, but I'm curious to see what it thinks. <laughs> Normally, it's pretty good at like inferring what you're thinking. <laughs> okay, that's creepier than I thought it would be. And for some reason it put words on it. Uh, here's an image of a nocturne, menacing yet whimsical fantasy. Oh, this is weird, the font stuff. It says, uh, a monson meandering but fit in a wormical high fantasy world. And it says, N-U-C-U-N-M-T-U-N-T-U-N-A-T-A-U-T-I dot com. Cool. Well, I like it. That's a little bit different than what I imagined, especially like these weird eyes and stuff. It's got like a moon or something. Maybe that's a big claw built into it. That's pretty cool. But anyways, yeah, that's uh, what it looks like to build your own GPT and then put it to use. So check that out. If you have a specific GPT that you'd like me to create, let me know and I can do that and we'll make a video running through that process as like a tutorial. I've got a few other tools like personally that I want to use that don't really apply to writing and stuff. So I don't know if I'm going to show those off or not.